we are deep in, you know what? How did we get here? Um, does anybody think they might know what this is? This, this sort of zigzag, and then a great loop, and then an arrow plunging downwards. Can anybody guess what that is? Or see what it is? The? Not exactly. But you're sort of getting warm. It's not ages of the church, but ages of the world, yes. Ages of the world. Uh, you may remember in Scripture, St. Paul talks at the beginning of the church, the very early years of the church, he speaks in Scripture as though it's the end of the world or the end of times, the last age. What? The last age? That's 2,000 years ago. But he must, have been, he must have made a mistake. No, no, no. No, okay. There are... A, a, a classic way of seeing the history of the world is that Adam is 4,000 years old. The evolutionists and quote-unquote scientists and all of those nonsense merchants who talk about billions of years of, the, of human history, fossils and, and then mega dinosaur age and all of this, they talk nonsense. Nonsense. The, what the church taught for many years is that Adam was about 4,000 years before Christ. That makes a lot more sense. Why? Because of original sin. Original sin means that human nature is like a lorry, a, va a, a truck, with a screw loose or with screws loose. The more the truck rolls, the screws inevitably get looser and looser until they fall out. The, the screws never tighten themselves up again. They just don't do that. You've got to, somebody's got to get in there and screw. Well, the history of human beings ever since Adam, ever since Adam wrecked human nature and flawed it, F-L-A-W-E-D, he flawed, ever since he flawed human nature, human nature is like the truck with screws loose. Just living, mankind degenerates. What? We are men. We are. We don't degenerate. We are enlightened and we are constantly on the up and up. We are improving. We are always improving. Progress goes, goes on and on. Pro the mankind is progressing upwards and upwards. I'm sorry, my friend. You, don't, you aren't Catholic. You can't be Catholic and you don't understand. You can't believe in original sin. If you believed in original sin, you would recognize that the story of the human race is one bump downwards after another, and then one lift up until the gigantic lift up, which of course, in the year naught, was our Lord Jesus Christ. So this is the last age of humanity. The tremendous lift that Jesus Christ gave to humanity, lifting humanity way over what Adam was, even before the fall. Adam was in a very perfect state before the fall, with no inclination with no he was he wasn't mortal he couldn't suffer and he didn't have any trouble with his lower nature he had no trouble difficulty controlling his lower nature like you and I can have those three qualities were lost he had to die he was able to suffer and he had from then on difficulty controlling his lower nature and that's why mankind keeps dropping but there's there are six ages before one, two, three, four, five, six, before the seventh age of the world, which is our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, first to the age of Adam, of Adam about 4,000 years ago, a thousand years later, Noah, the flood. One moment. Oh, dear, oh dear, I can't write my letters. Um, Noah. So Adam, the a thousand year degeneration, and the, at the humanity's got pretty rotten. And the Lord God is so rotten that the Lord God has to flood it all out and start again with eight souls on the ark. And that is, of course, Noah. Noah was a very fine man, a very great man, a very good man. And he had three sons, and all four of them had a wife. So there was eight souls on the ark. And with eight souls, the Lord God started all over again. The, the ark is still there on Mount Ararat. There have been sightings of it. Look it up on the in internet. It's very interesting. Uh, there are apparently on the top deck 
uh, 47, uh, something like 47 rooms for people. Noah was obviously trying to uh, get people to uh, rent an apartment on the ark so that they, okay, they, could, they could save their souls. Nobody bought it. Nobody bought it. They just made fun of him. But he did, he, at least he had the respect of his three sons and their four wives, so eight of them survived. Mrs. Noah has the reputation and tradition of being a shrew. I don't know if it's true. Uh, anyway, uh, so the, the, the first drop down to, and, and so w w the Lord God gave humanity a great lift by getting rid of all the bad guys. Imagine today drowning all the bad guys. Oh, <laughs> what a dream. <laughs> but I don't know if the Lord God will do it. So down, th then the next, so Noah's about, about 3,000. Um, the humanity starts degenerating again under Noah. We don't know much about these ancient, very ancient periods. Humanity, humanity degenerates again. And God has to step in again to uh, counteract this drop. And he steps in with Abraham. And that's around, three, that's around 2,000. This is very broad. Um, to around 2,000, Abraham. Uh, Abraham is pulled out of Ur of the Chaldees, a corrupt city, and he has to separate, and that's the beginning of the separation of the Jews and the beginning of the sense of superiority of the Jews over the rest of the human race. goes back a long way. And originally, it was true. It was true in this sense that uh, God did give them some real advantages, as I say, we also gave them some real punishments, but it was, it was a very important step for humanity that the Jews were being pulled out of the mainstream, separated from the mainstream, in order to provide the cradle another 2,000 years later for the Messiah. And the Israelites, the, the Hebrews, did provide that cradle. They provided our Lord with his mother, they provided him with St. Joseph, they provided him with the apostles. They provided him with uh, St. Joachim and St. Anna, his grandparents. And these are very, very fine people. Very fine people. Fit to be the grandfather, the grandmother, and the mother of our Lord in his, divine, in his human nature. So the Jews, remember, at the same time that they provided the Pharisees that killed our Lord, they also provided his mother and his grandparents and the apostles and all of the Jews that launched the Catholic Church. Therefore, the Jews did succeed in their 2,000-year mission of uh, blasting into orbit our divine Lord, the Messiah. The, everything in the Jewish race, everything in Jewish history, everything about the Israelites is oriented towards the Messiah. How then could they deny the Messiah when he came? Mystery of good old iniquity, human iniquity, based on original sin. When I <laughs> used to teach in the seminary, I used to have the seminarians there, and about one question in three that I fired at them was to be answered by original sin, because it accounts for so many things, alas. How can you understand human beings if you don't understand original sin? But the modern world absolutely denies original sin. Modern, man is born immaculate in, in the modern world, which is, which is madness. So... Um, Abraham, Abraham. Uh, then the the uh, the the Jews, the Israel Israelites, are trapped inside Egypt. They're being oppressed. Um, the Pharaoh doesn't want to do what he should do. Uh, the Lord God sends Moses, and that's to uh, at one and a half, about fifteen hundred Moses, more or less, and Moses. Uh, pulls the Israelites out of Egypt and he strikes with the Lord God, or the Lord God strikes with Moses the Old, uh, the Old Testament, the covenant of the Old Testament on Mount Sinai, the Ten Commandments, which are just the natural law. Uh, and um, so there's a, there's a reflection there, which is, uh, there we are. Uh, the, he, he strikes the, the, the contract, the deal, makes a deal with the Jews. You look after me and I will look after you. That, that's that sort of it. 
and, and again, it's very much in view of the Messiah. The, uh, there's a marvelous article in the Summa Theologiae of St. Thomas Aquinas um, concerning the furnishings of the old temple, the one, the one and only temple in Jerusalem. And uh, that the, every single piece of furniture, every single feature of the inside of that temple points towards the Messiah. It's a marvelous article. And everything in Jewish history points towards the Messiah. Still to this day, the poor Talmudic Jews, and a Talmudic Jew is not an Old Testament Jew. That's another story. But the Talmudic Jews still believe in the Messiah. They're, they're, they're oriented towards the Messiah. The whole of the Jews is pointing towards the Messiah. The Messiah came and they refused him. And that's the drama, tragedy, and psychopathology of the Jews. That they were made for the Messiah and they refused him. And that means the whole of their nature is going to in this way, towards this, and then they themselves refuse it and push it back. It's like the irresistible force meeting the immovable object. And that is the twisting, grinding drama deep inside every single Jew. Poor things. Poor things. Unless and until they uh, recognize the true, their Messiah. He is a Jew. Our divine Lord in his human nature is a Jew. No mistake. Don't listen to those poor Protestants who try to get out of it. Understandably try to get out of it. By trying to say some way or other he isn't. He can't be a Jew. Well, he can't be a Talmudic Jew. That's absolutely right. But he, is an, he was an Old Testament Jew, which is a completely different thing. So Moses takes hold of the Jewish people and pulls them uh, out of the Egypt into the, the, the promised land. And again, the, the downward slide uh, b begins. Notice each time, in fact, we're, we're getting lower and lower. Humanity, because of religious sin, is degenerating all the time as a whole. And so um, Moses, uh, Moses, the, the Jews uh, start degenerating under Moses, 500 years, and we get the Lord God intervenes with Solomon, with Solomon to build the temple. And the building of the temple is a landmark in Israeli history, in the history of the people of God. They have had a tabernacle that the company them with them through the desert. But here at last, uh, Solomon is allowed. David has got too much blood on his hands. He's a warrior king. Solomon is a king of peace. He's allowed to build the temple. It's a magnificent edifice. It's, and, and you read the Old Testament, and they're marvelous passages. Uh, the, the, the Lord God prescribing the furnishings and the, the, um, the, what, what, describing the, interior, the architecture and the furnishings. Everything is described by God himself. God himself is forming the Old Testament people in, in view of the New Testament. The whole of the Old Testament is for the New Testament. The whole of the Jewish thing prior to our Lord is for our Lord. Our Lord comes and they refuse him. Mystery of iniquity. So uh, Solomon builds the temple. Then again, there's a degeneration. The degeneration is so severe that the Lord God has to punish the Israelites with the Babylonian captivity. That's in the uh, 600s. I'm sorry, the 500s before our Lord. In the 500s, the Assyrians are allowed to come in by God. And Isaiah says, through the prophet Isaiah, the Lord God says to the Assyrians, watch out, the, more or less. It's not his language exactly, but... Watch out, you Assyrians. Right now, I'm using you as an instrument, and you're going to conquer the Jews. But if you don't behave yourselves, you, a turn, are going to be conquered as well. Watch out. You've got no immunity just because you're acting for a while as my instrument. That, that's always true, of course. Always true. But in any case, um, there, there's a degeneration that takes under, uh, place uh, in the Solomonic period. And that's where it's after the, even after the temple is built, the Jews degenerate. And they have to be, uh, the, 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 the God sends them many prophets, uh, the uh, four great prophets, um, Isaiah, Daniel, uh, Jeremiah, Daniel, and Ezekiel, and then 12 minor prophets. They're all in the Old Testament. All of it read, 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 read. Because you, reading the Old Testament, reading Scripture, you get a sense of God, of God, of Almighty God. He is the key to the whole thing. Of course he is. From him we come, and to him we meant to go back. He creates us in this little life on earth, and at the end of this little life on earth, we're meant to go back to him in paradise. He is the center of our existence. 
Our existence is completely inex inexplicable without God. So, um, Solomon, the, the, the people degenerate again, and uh, he has to, uh, in he, he, God intervenes for the last time, well, not for the, the last time, the, the last but one time, with the prophet Ezra. Ezra, many of you may not have heard of, but Ezra was, the, one, was one of the leading Jews on the return from the captivity. And Ezra set up again the worship, the true worship of the one true God, the one true worship of the one true God at that time in the temple. They rebuilt, the Jews rebuilt the temple, and Ezra rebuilt the worship. And that way, the, we come down, the, the, the Solomon was about 1,000, Abraham 2,000, Noah 3,000, Adam 4,000, before our Lord, and Ezra about 500. It's fairly symmetrical. Um, Ezra, and then the last degeneration is the degeneration of the Jews coming back from the Babylonian captivity, chastened, corrected. They never again committed idolatry. The Jews are free of idolatry. Uh, they, 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 they remain one God and just one God. But the, you know, it's the rise of the Pharisees and the rise of the outward practice of the religion without the inward heart. And that again, that God doesn't like that. It's the exterior without the interior. Heaven knows it's been, there's, there's been enough of that uh, in the Catholic Church as well. It's good old human nature again. It's bad old human nature once more. Original sin once more. It's all the time. All the time. Original sin is a battle 24-7. Uh, so and then f the, uh, after the, the, the generation out of the Pharisees, is the time has come for the Messiah to be born, to take flesh, for God to take flesh. The Messiah enters into history. The year, let's say, the year naught. The Messiah is interesting. And that, of course, is the biggest liftoff of all. Much, it, it's a liftoff with the incarnate God. It's a liftoff which d d dwarfs all of these little liftoffs. The little liftoffs have been big enough lifts, and they've been big enough gifts to the human race. But uh, God has foreseen, ever since Adam, you may remember, uh, God prophesies that the, the, the woman is going to tread on the snake. And that's Our Lady going to tread on the devil, the mother of the Messiah. The, 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 the God takes flesh and the church rises. The church rises for uh, until about 1.2. Let's say 1.2. Uh, in other words, uh, the height of the Middle Ages. 1.2. That's, that's a generalization. Some people would say it's, it's 1,100, not 1,200. 1,000, not 1,100. doesn't matter. The Middle Ages were the high point of, Christian, of Catholic civilization. And from then on, it's, as, as said in the Declaration, it's a descent all the way to the modern world. And uh, what's going to happen? Uh, finally, the Antichrist is going to, is going to appear. The Antichrist will appear at the bottom of, this, the bottom of this slide when the human race will have been extremely unfaithful to God, more unfaithful than ever, unfaithful to greater graces than ever. Uh, and um, it will be uh, uh, the horrible reign of the Antichrist. It will last for three and a half years. He's going to fight the kingdoms of the earth. He's going to prevail. He, he will be given to conquer the saints. It's all, all of this is in the book of the Apocalypse. Uh, he will conquer the saints. It will be a horrible time. Uh, God will send Enoch and Elias, two great prophets, uh, one p pagan and one Jew, both great men of God, uh, to uh, de defend his church and to defend the believers and to provide the church with the, its last great crop of saints under the persecution of the Antichrist. The persecution will bring forth great saints. That's why God allows persecutions. Because persecutions send souls to heaven. If, 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 we hadn't, if there hadn't been Judas Iscariot and the, and the Pharisees, our Lord, would, you and I wouldn't have been redeemed. Our Lord would, would not have died for us. So uh, the bad guys serve their purpose. As St. Augustine says, the bad guys are there either to convert or to persecute the good guys. Both are purposes for God. So uh, 
the Antichrist will provide the church with its last greatest triumphs, but it won't be a triumph in this world. In this world, the mass will finally be uh, completely obliterated. It won't be celebrated anymore. And when the mass is no longer celebrated, the world comes to a stop and it's rolled up, burnt, and there's a new heavens, new heavens and a new earth. So there is a purpose of history. It is going somewhere. And where it's going is the last great triumph of the church. What does this mean? This means that... Um, that original sin is always there. It's going to be there to the end. God has taken... His, when, when Adam fell, God changed his plan, so to speak. God had a plan B. The plan A was that Eve would have been a good girl. Adam would have been a good boy. Their children would have been good little boys and good little girls. And all of them would have got to, got to the end of their lives and quietly and happily, with a very peaceful passage would have glided up to heaven and if none of them had ever sinned then all the human race would have gone up to heaven if some of the sin if some of the children if Adam and Eve had been good boy and a good girl and some of the children had sinned and some hadn't then the ra human race would have been divided partly those that suffered from original sin and part that didn't and of course you could be sure that there would have been antagonism and so on as it is God allowed for the, the fall to take at the, very, at the very beginning. So all the children of Adam, original sin passes by the man. It doesn't pass by the woman. All the children of uh, Adam are flawed with original sin. And God then kicked in with plan B, which you may remember from the liturgy of Easter, is, uh, is a greater than plan A. The, the, the human race is raised by our Lord Jesus Christ to greater heights than it would, could have reached with Adam alone. Therefore, plan B is a, is a gift of God, a huge gift of God. It's the gift of his own divine son for our redemption. Uh, so th the, wickedness, the wickedness around us today has a purpose. It, it's part of God's plan B. Uh, it's, it's, a tremendous it's a tremendous corruption of the Catholic Church a tremendous corruption of Catholics. God has taken it all into account. He knows exactly what's going on. He has allowed it. He's, he's dosed it by the millimeter, if you like, by the, by the ounce. It's, it's calculated by the ounce. And um, it, it, it has its purpose. It is, we will see its purpose. If we live long enough, we will see what God, God was up to by allowing what is otherwise the incomprehensible degree of evil today. You may know, you know, of, of kindergarten, children being offered in kindergarten to change sex. Being offered in kindergarten in the name of liberty, being asked if they want to change. It's madness, absolute madness. But this is modern man. And we've not seen the worst of it. The worst of it is still to come. It's worsening day by day. But it has a purpose, God's purpose. And uh, therefore, we need, uh, we, need a, a, we need very much to trust in God. It's easy today for one's trust in God to be shaken by what he seems to be allowing, what, by what he is allowing. Because if, he, if there was something going on that he didn't allow, it would stop instantaneously. He is God. So, um, are there any questions there before we move on? Yes. The chastisement, uh, let's say it's something like that. Yes, it's something like that. It, it's it's, it's uh, like the Counter-Reformation in the Middle Ages was a, a, a tremendous lift for the Catholic Church. Well, the, the reaction against Luther, that's why God allowed Luther to purify his church. That's why he's allowing what, what he's allowing today, to purify his church. And what God wants... <laughs> <laughs> it's some top-class Catholics. <laughs> yeah, you've got it, my friend. You've got it. It's, uh, <laughs> the problem is right here. <laughs> That's where the problem is. <laughs> uh, so, you know, um, he wants so, some Catholics ready to be martyrs. Now, it, it's not too good. It's, it, it, 
the way to prepare for martyrdom is not to think about martyrdom every day. The way to prepare for martyrdom is to, is to be a faith, faithful in all little things, day by day. Uh, in the Missal, uh, which is gone, but the, in the Missal there are these martyrs of the early church. They were absolutely unknown and, un, and un, un, unexceptional people until the great moment came when they were offered, do you, do you, are you, will you sacrifice incense or not? No, I won't, I can't. And that decision not to sacrifice incense was a decision built by many, many faithful days, unknown and up till the moment when they, the, the, the choice went, they had to make the choice. It's, it, can be, it could be easy like that tomorrow or the day after for ourselves. 